What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be going through a checklist before shopping around for NFTs and what you should look for. This is also known as the fabric method. And I just want to give a shout out to Giancarlo because this is actually his method. So I'm just diving deeper into the topic, uh, but definitely check out his channel. He's a great resource for NFTs and investing advice. Okay, so basically the fabric method helps you filter out NFT projects by going through five different categories. First one is F, which stands for founders. Who are they? Do they have a track record? Why are they making NFTs? These are all important things to ask when you're considering the founder. Uh, the second one would be art. You know, is it unique? Is it compelling? Is it pretty? This isn't the most important part of uh, investing in NFT projects because there are some that have horrible art but do well. Um, but it's something to consider. Uh, B would be blockchain. So if you can, um, it's good to look at the blockchain metrics. So the sales data, the volume that they're doing in, in Ethereum, uh, how many diverse holders there are. This is going to give you an idea of how spread out the project is and how many different wallets are holding it. Um, I would be innovation slash impact. Are they doing something new? Are they doing something that is different than other NFT projects? How are they really impacting the whole space? You know, are they making a video game? Are they collaborating with, you know, Sony? Are they doing something crazy? Or are they just coming out with a t-shirt? You know, is that part of their roadmap? These are important things to ask um, for the longevity of certain projects. Uh, C would be community. This is probably the easiest thing. So that's just like checking Discord, checking their Twitter, their social media metrics, how diehard are the fans about it. Um, this is pretty easy to check. So founders, let's get into the founders. Um, who are they? Do they have a track record? So sometimes founders can be anonymous. Sometimes they can be public. Um, but it's important to dig into their history and see whether or not they have a reputation of successful projects or if they're kind of just making this out of the blue. Are they someone new? You know, it might be a little more riskier if that's the case. And also if they have a large following or influence because that is very helpful when you're doing marketing for an NFT project. So this is an example of an anonymous founder. Uh, this is Pac, he's been an NFT artist for a while now. I think he's been around in space for a few years. Um, but he's got a big reputation in the space. As you can see, you know, over 250, over 260,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, he's got a lot of different collections that he's dropped and uh, does a good amount of volume um, per each project. So this is someone that I would trust, but is still an anonymous founder. Uh, People Pleaser is a public figure. Um, she's done work with Arweave. She's done work with Uniswap. She's a 3D designer by trade, I believe. Um, but she's got a lot of notoriety, a lot of public um, publicity. She's been featured on the cover of Fortune magazine. She's been doing interviews. Uh, and she also runs the Pleaser DAO, which is a separate project of its own, and successful in its own right. Um, and she's also dropped several NFT projects on OpenSea. And you can see the volume that they've done, the floor price, the amount of holders. So People Pleaser is someone that I would buy into if they released a project that was you know, cheaper or uh, something new. So for art, is it original? Is it unique? Is it cloned? Now this is the most subjective part and probably the least important, but still important to consider. Now on the left here, you can see there's a soul punk this is clearly just a cloned version of the CryptoPunk, but they just ported it over to Solana. Now, this is something I would not invest in personally, but it probably will go up in price as the Solana um, chain grows in adoption and as CryptoPunks and NFTs grow more as a kind of a global phenomenon. Uh, second one here is Mechaverse. I love the artwork on Mechaverse. I think it was super cool. Um, unfortunately, they did kind of have a lot of controversy around the way they launched. Um, but yeah, Mechaverse, super cool artwork. I love it. Uh, third one here is Habo from the legacy brand Habo, the Habo website, if you guys ever played it. Um, Habo is dropping an NFT collection, so that's what it looks like. And then obviously, lastly here, we have Mutant Ape Yacht Club. I personally think it's a really good investment to get into Mutant Apes. They're still under 5 ETH. I think maybe by the time this video comes out, they're, they're going to be a 5 ETH floor. But it's, uh, it's definitely a much more affordable rate than like the 30 floor ETH that you're seeing for the Bored Ape Yacht Club. The reason I like Mutant Apes is because it has a secondhand effect. So the more that the Bored Apes rise up in popularity, which they are, 
um, then I can safely assume that the mutant apes are going to go up in value just at the same rate, probably in tandem, in parallel. Um, and plus, we haven't even seen whether or not the bored apes have gotten listed on Coinbase NFT platform. I really think they will. Um, but yeah, just a lot of positives if you invest in mutant apes, personally, in my opinion. Okay, so B is blockchain. So with the blockchain, we can look at the sales data, the unique holders, and the volume. Now, this section here, this top one here, is what the OpenSea page looks like when you click on volume traded. And it's gonna show you over the last 90 days how much volume uh, the project has done, what the average sales price is, and those are all important things to check to see how healthy the NFT project is. Uh, and then below that, we can see how many items there are of an NFT. So if you were looking at mutant apes, there would be 10,000 items. Um, how many holders, how many different owners there are of the project. Uh, the more scattered the owners, the better. Um, this is because we want more people to be invested versus like just a few, you know, big wallets holding it. So generally, the more holders there are, the better it is. Uh, floor price, this is important, you know, for the price of going up, obviously. Uh, and then volume traded. This is how much Ethereum has been traded for this NFT project. Also an important metric to see how healthy the uh, sales are. And this is another screen here that we can look at. This is a little more technical, but if you look on these smart contracts on the Etherscan Explorer websites, it will actually show you um, the specific numbers. So it'll show you the amount of holders right here, how many transfers there's been, and the maximum total supply, as well as the cheapest um, NFT you can get it for. Sorry, the cheapest price for the NFT. So the minimum price for a cryptodes would be about six ETH or $28,000. Uh, and then this is another screenshot of a website that I use called Nansen AI. This is a paid website, uh, but this shows you a lot more in depth, um, the just the sales stats, the volume, and then you can even look at each wallet that's holding it. And you can look at what previous projects those wallets have invested in. Uh, this is called Nansen AI. It's a paid uh, software, R for roadmap. So what will it do? Why will it retain value? So this is important to ask yourself when you're investing in a project because it's really easy to get caught up in the hype of you know a minting session and then flipping it and then you know uh, getting involved with the social media and the Discord and all the hype. It's very, it's very, very energized when a minting is happening live. Uh, but it's also important to ask yourself, like, what's the longevity of this project? How are they gonna stick around for the long haul? Because those are the projects that really last. And, you know, long haul in NFT crypto world could be like six months, right? So to give you an example, the Bored Ape Yacht Club, it only went out like six months ago. Like if you bought a Bored Ape at mint price of like $200, um, that was six months ago. And imagine if you held it for six months, right? So if, you, if you're not able to hold a project for longer than six months, don't invest in it at all, right? Because this is all about like, this is investing at the end of the day, right? This is long-term thinking, but it's super easy to get caught up with these overnight 10 X's or overnight, you know, 50 X's uh, that we see all the time. And it's just important to ground yourself and remember that these projects have to sustain themselves for a long period of time to actually go up in value, right? Real growth happens over the course of months and years, not, you know, in a week. <laughs> so uh, roadmap, this is an example of the Mechaverse roadmap here. As we can see from the beginning, uh, they had a website update. They've got the creation of Mecha Labs, which is a company uh, to expand the team. They're doing giveaways, they're doing creative art contests. And this is really cool. They're actually gonna do 3D prints with high quality materials exclusively for the holders. So I guess they're gonna make like 3D action figures or 3D models of the uh, Mechaverse, which would, be, which would be really cool. Uh, and then they got merchandise, you know, pretty easy stuff, anyone can make merchandise. Uh, they got future airdrops and a Mechaverse HQ where the team will focus on a more ambitious drop for the phase two start. Uh, so that that's pretty cool. That's Q4 for 2021 of the Mechaverse. And that's an example of a roadmap. This is another roadmap here. This is for on one. Um, so right after they do the sale, they're gonna do a Discord community vote to vote on the best design. 
they're going to drop apparel, which again, I'm not really a big fan of apparel being included in the roadmap because it's pretty easy to make a t-shirt. <laughs> um, next part would be art collaboration exhibits, art and collaborative exhib exhibitions for on one holders. That's pretty cool. And then comic book draftings. Uh, so I guess they're coming out with a comic book as well. That's pretty cool. All right, and now we're on to impact slash innovation. Um, so we've recently seen that the Board Ape Yacht Club has actually done a joint venture with Tim, uh, sorry, with Universal Music Group. Um, so the owner of these four specific apes here has actually done like a deal with Universal Music Group and they're gonna be turned into like this digital band, I guess. Uh, and the reason that he can do this, the owner of these four NFTs, is because when you buy a Board Ape Yacht Club, you actually have access uh, to the rights and commercial like intellectual property rights. Um, so that's another big perk of these NFTs is if you own some of them and they get popular enough, right? If they grow enough, then they eventually like have enough clout where you can do deals with Timbaland and Universal Music Group. Um, obviously to put that in perspective, Universal Music Group is huge and they manage uh, artists such as Drake, Tupac, 50 Cent, Six Lack, um, Taylor Swift, I think, as well, Erica Badu, just a bunch of like relevant artists are under the Universal Music Group uh, portfolio. Um, but anyways, lastly here is community. People are your most valuable asset. So what I mean by that is, you know, a community can easily be measured by looking at the Discord, the Twitter, the Instagram, the TikTok, all the engagement on there, the comments, blah, blah, blah. And in the beginning for NFT projects that are just launching, like within their first month or even two months, the community tends to be you know, pretty strong. Uh, but as reality starts to set in, as the market starts to fluctuate and prices go up and down, you'll see people sell, people you know, come on board and people, um, the community will change as a dynamic of the price as well. So it's important to remember um, that community is a huge you know, selling point for NFT projects. Like for me, if I don't invest in a project that doesn't have a strong community, right? Because if there's no community, if there's no people behind the project that are passionate, then it might as well be dead in the water. Um, so these are just like some screenshots of influencers or celebrities that have gotten into certain NFTs. Uh, Snoop Dogg, of course, you know, he's gotten into CryptoPunks. Uh, what else, the art, the art block one here, I forget what it's called. And then Jimmy Fallon recently just bought a Bored Ape Yacht Club as well. So, so again, this just proves the narrative that NFTs are going to continue to become this widespread kind of pop culture phenomenon. Um, and the last thing to consider for community actually is um, the memes for it. And let me just show you guys this quote that I got from it. So memes do not age well. Most of them evaporate within a few days. But the points that they make can leave a lasting effect on society and politics. In countries with censorship, memes can obtain an even bigger value as people throw them into public discourse to send resistance uh, messages and oppose corruption. So memes go pretty deep, actually. Um, but the reason I added that to the community section is obviously, you know, the more memes that a NFT project has, or like within its own little discord, the kind of more active a meme community is, it's a healthy way of measuring like how active the project is as a whole and how widespread the ideas are of the NFT project. Um, so that's why I threw it in there, but yeah, memes go deep. Um, lastly guys, thank you guys for watching if you've made it to the end of this video. Uh, I just wanna mention that you guys should follow me on Twitter because I will be doing a giveaway pretty soon on there. I'm either going to be giving away like an NFT or like some Ethereum. Uh, so follow me on there if you want to stay up to date with that. And if you want to follow me on the other social channels, Crypto Comics 1 on Twitter, uh, same thing on Instagram, and then Crypto Comics on TikTok. Thank you guys for watching. If you found this helpful at all, give me a thumbs up because it helps me get ranked on YouTube. Um, but yeah, thanks for everything. Peace out.